Man, the biggest headline from yesterday, I think, Steve Nash mutually parting ways with the Nets as head coach after starting the season two and five. It's a crazy time for this move to come because don't forget in the offseason, Kevin Durant reportedly requested a trade from Brooklyn and the ultimatum to Joe Tsai was to choose between him or Nash and GM Sean Marks. Can we start with this lie? Steve Nash was fired. Sean Marks calls him into his office. Steve, we're relieving you of your duty. Okay. Is that mutually? It's not like Steve Nash went up to Sean Marks and said, Sean, I'm not getting it done. Mm. I really think you should put someone else in it. And he's like, okay, I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm sorry that that happened. That's not how it happened. I, I don't know that. You know, good. I, I, I don't know that for you sure. You know, Skip, that, that's what they do. They, we, you know, you know, black coaches never mutually get to part. They were fired. Okay, well, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Things are shaking up for the Brooklyn Nets. The organization released the news that their head coach, Steve Nash, was fired. Lots of rumbling going around that Ime Udoka may be hired to replace Steve Nash. Ime Udoka, the head coach of the Boston Celtics, that was suspended for having consensual relations with a woman within the organization. And by the way, that woman was never named or held accountable at all for also violating the organization's rules. If you remember, M.A. Udoka's name was ran through the mud. While women like Malika Andrews said the women should be protected, their names shouldn't be put out there for also breaking the code. Andrews wanted M.A. Udoka to be held accountable, but didn't want the women to be held accountable. If you missed those videos, the links will be below. And at the time, Stephen A. said that Boston should either fire Udoka and let him move on to another team or keep him. Now that it looks like Udoka is heading over to Brooklyn, Malika Andrews isn't happy with the news and she's still saying that he should be held accountable after he was already held accountable. Take a look. Well, there's a word that Shanae used that's just rattling around in my brain, accountability. I'm not sure how that gets grasped back for Brooklyn uh, because it, it's not lost on me that Ime Udoka has done incredible things with the Boston Celtics. But it just seems like if we're having this conversation about Ime Udoka being hired by Brooklyn, where he was an assistant coach, accountability is the word I keep coming back to. Where is the accountability to women in the NBA? Zach, what do you make of this? Look, at the end of the day, very few people, I believe, are beyond redemption. And I'm not saying that that's the scenario here. But what I am saying is I sincerely hope that when we talk about due diligence and vetting, the Brooklyn Nets are taking into account multiple voices on this and who could be affected because we know that this is going to be ongoing. And I want to note this, Malika is the only one still bringing up the Udoka situation. She's like he needs to be held accountable and she's reintroducing accountability over and over as if he wasn't held accountable. She's acting like he broke the law or something. Listen, Malika, he had consensual relations with a woman. Both of them broke the rules, but only one of them fined. Only one of them had their pay impacted. Only one was suspended from their job. Only one was publicly humiliated, not just within the industry, but on national television, all on social media in front of the whole world. Only one of them. The other party or parties never had to go through that. When one, Yudoka is not a married man, but allegedly the woman he was with was married. Yudoka was held accountable, but there's been zero accountability placed on the woman. It's like she's wanting him to lose everything for having consensual relations. And you really have to watch these feminists and misandrists out here. These women who really hate men. They hate men so much that they want to destroy men. They will come up with false Me Too stories or they'll try to change the standards around in order to make a Me Too situation fit in instances where they do not. No law was broken, but she's trying to bend and extend the situation, basically exaggerating and talking about it as if it's more serious than what it really is. You know, trying to persuade people to believe that something happened, so fire him, cancel him, and cancel him forever. This is what man-hating women do. And Malika saying something about being held accountable to women in the NBA? It makes no sense. Women are not players, women are not coaches. That's what the WNBA is designed for. But I'm assuming that Malika is talking about the other personnel on the administrative side. All the Adoka situation proved is that women are liabilities everywhere you put them. Go to any job anywhere where there's a bunch of women working and you're going to find drama and catty foolishness. And ladies, you know what I'm talking about is true. You have experienced some level of what I'm talking about at work. I'm telling you, it's always a problem. It's always some kind of mess going on. So Malika made her statement and her co-host weighed in as well. Take a look. 
Yeah, and I think there are rightful qualms when you hear about this, and particularly as women in the NBA, we understand what that narrative became. I just don't understand why they keep saying this. Women are not in the NBA. Women are in the WNBA. Just stop saying that. Um, but I also understand that this day and age, Organizations have to do their due diligence. And once they do their due diligence, they make a decision. And if the decision is based on basketball pertaining, you know, Ime Udoka, it makes sense because of what he brings, the mindset of what he was able to do. I know a year ago we were talking about how Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum couldn't get on the same page. There was a power struggle with the Celtics. Yeah. Well, guess what? He reached out to both of those guys and got them on the same page, and you have to credit Marcus Smart, having that team camaraderie. Uh, then you also think about the idea of the defense. I mean, he took that, he completely resuscitated the Celtics defense to the point that it catapulted them to the NBA Finals. And so... I'm someone that trusts and believes that, especially when Adam Silver came, was it last week? Because I never remember time. Last week and said, hey, we've instituted tip lines. There's situations where we're trying to create a safe environment, not just for one team, but all teams. I feel like the Nets, like you said, they, they made the decision to vet him probably longer before this. And they're going to make a decision based on the legalities of what they deem acceptable. And if they so choose Ime Odoka, it seems like he is the right person for the job. Not to mention before he became Boston's head coach in 2021, he was the assistant coach in Brooklyn. So now it's looking like he's going back to Brooklyn, but this time as head coach. Well, you're asking the wrong person that question because I was a person that never believed that Steve Nash deserved the job to begin with. An incredibly nice guy, an incredibly accomplished basketball player, but has never coached on any level. And so the fact that he was given the job to begin with was something, as you recall, Molly, I lamented from the day that he was hired. Having said Absolutely. that, an incredibly nice guy, class personified. Um, there's nothing negative to say about the man um, as a person or even as a basketball mind. But to be a coach, particularly one with zero experience on any level coaching, uh, you've got to be in an ideal situation. I, I vehemently stated, fire him or keep him. But it should have been an HR matter. It was none of our business, okay? It was a private matter. It never should have been publicized. And you're jeopardizing this man's career. So the fact that this man now has an opportunity to come and coach the Brooklyn Nets, I think is a huge plus. And remember a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how Steve Nash could get fired and Ime Udoka could come on and be the coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And lo and behold, it's on the verge of happening in an official capacity. That's exactly what they need. It's their last session. Salvo. We'll see how it works out. Yes, we shall see. And Malika, there's nothing you can do about it. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Why is Malika so pressed about Udoka getting hired in Brooklyn? Also, what do you think about the move? Out with Nash, in with Udoka? Go ahead and sound off below. Special thank you to Maurice. Dark Power, Edmund, and our sisters Tanette and Shelby. I appreciate all of you for your support. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balanced analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.